Mystery novelist Sarah Paretsky, and yeah, I'm probably mispronouncing that, is famously quoted as saying, most people don't have the money to spend on advertising to create awareness among readers, nor do they have the contacts at newspapers or magazines to get their books reviewed. True word, Sarah. Life's a bitch as an author. One thing I do know is I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and we are talking to you today about advertising for authors, should you do it. So, uh, Evo and I are going to be chatting this one solo again, but we are going to have guests again starting next week. So let's get right to the beer portion of it. I am drinking uh, one of our Imperial Stout home brews that we brewed last winter. We have a few left, and we need the bottles because we now have a... Uh, whiskey infused stout in uh, second fermentation that we need bottles to cask in or to bottle in a week. So drinking as quickly as I can. Looking forward to it, Jeff. Cannot wait for that one. I'm joining you with a lovely Ta Henket from the Dogfish Head Brewing Company. And that, I'm probably mispronouncing that too because I'm not Egyptian, believe it or not. So that is what I'm going to have. So here we go. Let's talk about advertising. Advertising. Um, I think it was yours because you have a bit of a background. You, you're sort of a, this is a fetish of yours, correct? Is that the right yeah, word? Unfortunately, I, I have a fetish for uh, making a living so that I can afford to do fun stuff like the book Smear Hangout and all the things we did publish Unum. Um, but yeah, I am I'm a many, many year, um, uh, over a decade veteran in the digital marketing and advertising world. Uh, so I know a little bit about this stuff, especially from a digital point of view. So let's zoom in a little bit, clarify what we are specifically talking about. There's a lot of advertising out there. We're not talking about advertising uh, that you pay to be on a specific site to have a little block ad on their website or, or print ad advertising or anything else. We're talking about just online digital advertising yep. that you yep. can self-serve. Yeah, that's really what I want to focus on on the on this show here today for the next 15 minutes or so is talk about self-serve advertising platforms that any author who is online has probably been made aware of. And and those two specifically are Google AdWords and Facebook paid placements. I don't even know what just Facebook advertising uh, by and large. Anyone can do these. Um there if you've ever signed up for a Google account, you probably have received an email that says, "Hey, you should sign up for AdWords." Uh right right behind that one. And almost the same thing for Facebook these days. Every time you make a post every once in a while you will notice that there's a little pop-up that says you know more people can see this if you give us money and a lot of authors are turning towards those areas uh, and, and so I figure that's a good place for us to stay nice and focused in the advertising world okay well let's uh, spoiler alert for anyone who doesn't want to know the ending here um, we're gonna dig into both of those a little bit but do you really feel that this kind of self-serve advertising for a startup author is worthwhile it's probably not the where well it's definitely not where I would spend my money initially um, there's the old adage that um, advertising um, is for is what is it's a tax on the unremarkable and I firmly believe that I've, I've been in this business for a very long time and there's another famous quote by Will Rogers and I think it was him he said if companies put more money into making their products better or put the same amount of money they put to making their products better as they did advertising they'd probably wind up selling more and it's kind of the same thing advertising to me has always felt like an easy way for people to feel good about what they're doing as opposed to making something better now I have no compunction spending large companies money because they're going to spend it with someone so they might as well spend it with me but for independent authors yeah it's not what you want to do initially it's it's not advertising that you need it's probably a, a better product but maybe you do have one that's a very great product and so we should probably cover if you're going to advertise you know kind of what to do so all fair and you're full of quotes tonight so I'm mm. curious to see what our final quote count will be for the evening so I, I tend to agree uh, especially for a startup author this advertising really not worth it but it's fun to play and it's interesting to, you know, you can throw a little bit of money at it, see what kind of results you get, maybe open a few doors. Yep. You know, even being of this opinion, I've done some advertising on my own for different projects I run. So let's pull them apart anyway for somebody who does want to tackle these. Uh, let's start with the big Google, the Googleopolis. If yeah. I'm an author, I want to uh, put some ads up there, what am I looking for? 
Sure. So Google is probably the best place to start if you're going to do it because it reaches, well, almost everyone. Um, and Google made their fortune, uh, $4.6 billion with a B in Q1 of 2012 uh, just on advertisement dollars. So, so lots, lots of money from that place. They make it real simple. Uh, you basically buy keywords. So whatever your book happens to be about, you are going to buy that keyword. Of course, you're not the only one buying that key, that keyword. You're actually in an auction uh, to buy words. And so those people who are willing to pay the most and also have the greatest ability to write decent copy for that ad will, will show up first. You've seen these ads. They're on the top of your Google bar or off to the side of your Google uh, search window. That's, that's where those things are. So if you're writing a science fiction book, maybe you want to buy the term science fiction book. Okay, you can do that. A smarter way to do that is if you are writing a book, you, you figure out what, what types of people actually might be interested uh, in, in what you have to say. Uh, maybe there's something that's happening in the, in the news that people are searching on quite a bit. And then you can write a real clever little ad that says, I've got a book that addresses that individual topic. That's much more likely to catch someone's attention because I don't believe that a lot of people go to Google to find um, what ads that they should be getting for them using ads to help them figure out what their next science fiction book is. You might want to catch them in a different way. All right. Uh, something that you are not saying is yep. buying ads for your title, putting a title around, you know, or buying an ad for your yep. characters or those big, you know, the, the stuff on the front of your book. Yeah, probably no one's searching for that kind of stuff. So you're really trying to put an ad in front of somebody that's searching on pieces of information. And chances are, if you have if any online property, chances are your title, unless of course your title is the same as any other title that's out there, it's likely original enough, it likely has its own cadence so that when someone's searching for that kind of stuff, they'll find it. I, I really wouldn't spend your money on trying to make sure people can find your book who already are looking for it. You want to get it out in front of people who, who have yet to do that. All right. Uh, anything else on Google before we switch to the other 800 pound gorilla? Yeah, one, one quick thing on that one. So there's two options. Obviously, you can run those little um, ads and the little text ads as long as you can write 25 character things for titles and 35 characters and another 35 characters and make it kind of pithy. It's, it's kind of interesting and it, it's worth paying. And, you, and this doesn't cost a lot of money. You're only paying on uh, what they call a per click basis. So when somebody searches, you don't pay, but when somebody clicks, uh, that's when you actually pay. So make sure you send them to the right page, maybe your Amazon page or your website, whatever. Um, the other thing you can do with Google is you can use their content network to distribute your ads as well so that when people are just naturally searching, like maybe you want to buy the term vampire fiction. Uh, and if it's possible that if there's a blog post someone has written that's talking about the Twilight series of books, it's a chance that your ad can run over there as well. You can even run your book cover. You can get other sorts of artwork done and make more of a display style ad. All of that can be powered with Google and you can reach a pretty wide network. So, switching gears from uh, the G to the F word, Facebook. Yes, Facebook. Yeah. Now, there's a couple different kinds of ads that you can run. Well, two major ones, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, place an ad, and then mm -hmm. you can uh, promote a post. Let's exactly talk about right. the advertising first. Yeah, and advertising works almost the same way um, as, as Google does, except you're not buying keywords. Here you're buying a certain audience. You go through the process of saying, yes, I'd like to advertise at the bottom of your page, or just type in Facebook advertising, and you nail down your demographics. This is the age range that I want to look for. I want to look in this particular geographic market. Uh, these, are the, these are the types of things people say inside of their profile, their likes, their interests, those sorts of things. You can really target it. I love Facebook's ability to really narrowly define the audience of who these ads are for. And then much like Google, you get to create an ad. Um, here you use an image and you use about 90 characters of text. Uh, the quick rule uh, to for success on Facebook is that ads go stale really quickly. And the thing that you want to change out on a regular basis is your is your uh, the image itself. So yes, use your book cover. Yes, use a picture if you have these of your main characters. Change the background image of your uh, change the background color of your image, but make that thing change up periodically. That's going to get more attention. Things that I've had better success with in Facebook than um, than in Google is when I'm trying to promote something, advertise something that I don't think someone would be looking for specifically. But I know what they might, that corollary interest, right? If somebody right. has said they like Twilight, yeah. but they've done that. They've committed, they that, two of they've them. committed that crime, yes. 
um, then and you uh, your ad targets people with that uh, interest, exactly. uh, then it's going to show up, you know, so they may not be looking to your point earlier, looking for a new book to read or right. anything else, but this will just kind of pop up and go, Ooh, look, a new vampire book. And they're going to yeah. click on that. Yeah. That's exactly the right way to do that. You find those interests and you write the ad copy in such a way to where you, where you say that very specific thing. You like twilight. I have written a book that kicks its ass. Please buy it now, that sort of thing. You can be really explicit in what you're trying to do, and you're really in our, trying to get someone's attention through that uh, inside of those the, those posts uh, that you're making. Yeah. And I think personally, and um, this is just one of the ways I geek out, going into Facebook and narrowing those topics down, typing different words, saying I want it in this geography, or yep. these interests, combining interests, mm -hmm. and it'll show you, it'll real-time calculate about how many people you're going to hit. Uh, yep. And you can really kind of fine tune it. I and and it. just like with Google, um, you you only pay when somebody clicks on the ad. Now there's an option where you can do it on a on a cost per view or CPM, which stands for cost per thousand, which is weird, but that means mill in every other country except for ours. Um, you can do that, but I recommend doing the cost per click. And you can spend small sums of money, you can five bucks a day, okay, uh, twenty bucks a day, you know, whatever you're really comfortable with doing, uh, and then measure how it actually is resulting. I mean, you want to make sure you're getting some sort of sales out of this. You want to get more than just clicks. You're hoping people actually will will buy your product. So you know, pay attention to the number of sales you are getting, and if you are not getting more than when you weren't advertising, perhaps it's not the smartest thing for you to do. Okay, now promoted posts, let's hit these real quick. Yeah. Different than ads, you're not going in and, and setting up something specifically. Promoted yeah. posts let you just rise above the noise more than a regular uh, entry on your, on your page, correct? I I really like promoted posts because you know there's lots of news coming out from Facebook, the Facebook algorithm, and how can we beat it? Because only 10 to 15 percent of my posts are being seen by my fans, and yada yada. So Facebook's uh, the way they're fighting that is they're saying, well, give us some money, and you can actually promote a post, and you will artificially influence Facebook's algorithm to cause your posts to show up to your fans or your friends uh, more often than they typically would. This is really a good idea if you are very good at creating content. If you really think about it and you have a true strategy about what you're going to post and why, it's not so good um, if you're just randomly posting crap because then you're just promoting randomly posted crap and that's never good. So use it judiciously. Uh, there is an option where you can say automatically promote the next thing that I produce. I would only do that once again if you've got a very good solid content strategy. But if you're just using Facebook to fart around, it's probably not the best idea. Only promote those posts that are really important. And don't promote posts that just simply say, hey, I've got a book that's on sale right now. You know, hey, it's free. I got news for you. Free stopped being a major selling thing about eight years ago. Everybody's got a free book right now. Promote something that is interesting. Facebook is still about consuming interesting content. It's not about sales and promotions. So if you're going to use a promotion, make sure you're shoving something up in the in the rank that is worthwhile that I actually would enjoy seeing. Key point there that you, you touched on, the promoted posts are only going to go to people who have already friended you and liked you. They're not going to break out and go to someone else. If you want to get new eyeballs entirely, you need to go and start paying for advertising. Yep, That's exactly right. Differentiators right exactly there. right. Exactly right. All right. Uh, wow, a whole lot of information in a very short amount of time. Anything yeah. that you wanted to touch on that we missed? I, I would just you caution people. Um, Advertising is a very seductive, easy way to get people to look at something that you may not be ready for them to look at. Uh, remember that these companies have built their fortune on on what you're doing. So just like Vegas, you know, are you going to win at uh, that particular scheme? Very much a grain of salt. It's not the first thing you should do, but if you've got money backing you and you really have a good plan behind it, eh, why not? Give it a shot. I think it can actually work. All right. Sounds good. Do you want to close us out? I, I will wrap us up. Before I wrap, though, Jeff, I should talk to the fine folks here listening about some new classes that we have coming up, some new educational offerings for those of you out there. On December the 11th, offering a free seminar, uh, the title of which is Book Titles, a Mixture of Art and Science. That's free, so we'll have information about that. And then in January, uh, we have two different classes starting up. Our uh, four-week class to help you get finished writing and get that book published, and then a six-week class which is designed to help teach you, well not help teach you, but to definitely teach you how to write a short ebook and actually get that published out there. I think that's all of them, yes? Yes. 
he is saying yes. So, great. Well, the Books of Beer Hangout is a production of E Publish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For a complete list of our educational offerings, including classes, workshops, and seminars, please visit epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show.